Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. We, uh, we are so grateful to God and to His Eminence, Gerhard Cardinal Müller, for agreeing to be with us at the Catholic Identity Conference. To tell you the truth, I'm a little starstruck, I'm a little overwhelmed by the honor that is ours in having His Excellence, His Eminence with us. Uh, Cardinal Muller, I would just like to say, I would like to offer a great big warm welcome from the Catholic Identity 2023. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you much no, for the invitation. Mm -hmm. And we are all belonging together in the same church, Universal Church. Absolutely. I have, I have a very um, a, a basic question for you to begin with. We've been hearing so much about the courageous uh, positions that you've been defending the church in the media. And all of us want to know, do you have friends? Are there people with you who are working in this important work of, of resistance? Do you have friends in the Curia? Yes, yes, I think everywhere, but uh, some of them are a little bit afraid. <laughs> um, they uh, have uh, been angry to have uh, some consequences, but we are uh, saved by Jesus Christ and uh, a believer in Jesus Christ who died on the cross and gave the good testimony against the uh, worldly power pilot. Uh, nobody should be afraid. God is with us. And therefore, we have to fight for the true faith, like Athanasius in the old times. All the is only one example, a famous example, but there are a lot of those who uh, gave the testimony with the words and with their life until to the martyrdom. And here in Rome, we are in the place of the martyrdom of St. Peter and Paul. And they didn't uh, bend in pension <laughs> like uh, the bishops of today, um, but they uh, gave uh, their life for the testimony that the word of God is the truth and that nobody can overcome the reality of God. You know, Eminence, you, you mentioned something here that I, I would love to have you comment on. I think one of the, the greatest sources of discouragement among Catholics in the United States, certainly and around the, around the world, is that as we have all of these problems, spiritual problems, the disintegration of the family, uh, the drug problems, the open border problem, the, 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 the fact that churches are closing all around the world, you have such discouragement, you have such scandal in the church. And, and I, don't, I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't want to ask you to be critical of Francis, but I, I wonder if you could comment on the fact that it just seems so incongruent that the Holy Father is stressing climate change in the middle of mm -hmm. all of this, you know, auto-destruction of the church and of the world. He talks so much about climate change that I think a lot of Catholics feel like they're just, he's not connecting with them. Do you, do you have an idea of, of why, what, what, what explains this stress on climate change on the part of the Vatican right now? Also, we as uh, uh, Catholics, uh, we are allowed to make some critics in our bishops and, and the Pope uh, because they are not outside of the human conditions. But we has it to made in a way very different to the Protestants. The Protestants are denying the institution, the divine institution of papacy and uh, of the Episcopal office. But we are only can uh, make some critics or remarks uh, to the persons sitting on uh, the cathedra of uh, St. Peter and of the apostles. And we are looking in, in the history of the, of the, of the uh, church. Uh, there are very absolute uh, confident people um, and, and theologians like St. Thomas Aquinas is, is absolutely in favor of the papal primacy, no doubt. Uh, because it's belonging to our, belonging to our faith, but there uh, there's also a critique against some um, special persons on the throne of uh, Saint Peter's involvement in in, in the, the politics. Uh, recording of the, the border problem, we have fear in, in Europe also with the immigration of Africa, but in the United States the immigration of, of of Mexico and the other states. We as Catholic cannot be not solidarity in, in an anti-solidarian way, 
but the question is where to resolve these problems as they cannot be resolved only all the problems in the world they cannot be resolved only in Europe or only in the United States or in Canada. We must help these people to um, develop their economy in their countries. No? That, That's an that interesting question, Eminence. I wonder if I could interrupt to ask you about that, because it seems like in our country, a lot of these migrants, these immigrants, are coming from Catholic countries, or formerly Catholic mm -hmm. countries, and there seems to be no interest in addressing the problems in the church in those Catholic mm -hmm. countries that are causing such hardship that people are actually leaving and trying to come to our country, which is also uh, right now in a lot of trouble economically. So they're, they're not actually going to be rescued, they're going from one bad situation to another. And I wonder why we never hear anything about the church in these formerly Catholic countries, like trying to do something to reform and restore the church that might help those people have a better life in their own countries. Mm -hmm. There we have the social doctrine of, of the church, and so this for me the, would be the best direction for, the, for good development of the economy of the society. We have this experience, for example, in Germany, my country, after the Second World War, the atheistic dictatorship of Hitler and, and, the, and the communists in the East, um, Adenauer and this uh, first uh, politicians uh, at the beginning, they were very convinced that good Catholics practicing and the orientation for the rebuilding of the society was, was the human understanding, the human image as a Christian image of the human being and also according to the social doctrine of the church, which was also developed by Pope uh, Leo the Thirteenth, uh, but also for some uh, leading figures in the 19th century, uh, Bishop Kettler and, and uh, Bishop and uh, Kolping is also known, uh, um, Catholic priest, uh, was uh, coming out from the the Catholic um, lay uh, movement and some uh, leading the bishops. And this was uh, the best orientation for the rebuilding of the German society according to this uh, basic principles of personality, subsidiarity and solidarity. And uh, we uh, can see the, the good effects which it had. And, and uh, these Catholic uh, countries with a great uh, number of uh, all uh, people in, in Mexico, for example, are Catholics or ca are coming out from a Catholic uh, tradition, but they had also uh, the Masons, uh, these Masons who destroyed also the problems uh, in these countries uh, coming out from a Catholic uh, position, but from this uh, Masons, uh, super capitalists, and they're ignoring the dignity of human beings are only interested in their their own um, um, advantages no? and in these other countries in, in, in south america we have this small so-called elite it's not a real elite a good elite is uh, will work hard in favor of their people but they're working for their own interests and they enjoyed the countries uh, like Argentine, Argentina. No? It was, I read it uh, after the First or Second World War, was one of the five or six, seven richest countries in the world. And all uh, became worse by some uh, bad uh, politicians uh, who didn't respect the Christian few of the human existence and of the world. And therefore, um, I hope that the Holy Father Francis not will only um, speak uh, with this uh, now socialists, that is a socialist in Venezuela, in reality, as they are capitalists, <laughs> with, with only with socialistic uh, phrases and propaganda and reality, they are brutal uh, capitalists, also like in, in China, no? they are more communistic party, but they are, have a capitalistic uh, view uh, of, of the world um, that the Holy Father uh, 
would speak with these people and to show that only with our uh, Catholic social theory we can make a good development with a participation of everybody respecting respecting the dignity of everybody. Exactly. And with the they, they, I mean, I think it's 92% in Argentine are Catholics, mm -hmm. and yet they passed an abortion law and the, and the country was mostly in favor of that. It seems to me that climate change isn't the problem in the Argentine. There's, there's a spiritual problem mm -hmm. that's bringing hell on earth mm -hmm. to a country, for a Catholic country like Argentine, like the Argentine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the great majority of the people is against abortion, but this so-called elite self-appointed elite they are uh, fulfilled with uh, western ideologies uh, of the so-called emancipation um, and the, the woke ideology with the cancel culture and all this uh, wrong and anti-human uh, ideologies post-humanism transhumanism and all these uh, wrong basic ideas of our human existence is uh, so negative and is, is, is a culture of destruction, the culture culture of uh, of death and not the civilization or the culture of life. That are the two points um, in uh, contradiction. And we are promoting the culture of life. That every human life is worth worth to be lived. Mm -hmm. When you when you use the word the elites, um, are you referring to, for example, the World Economic Forum, the Great Reset, Agenda Twenty Thirty? I assume you are. And then, what do you? Why is it that the Vatican has become so interested in partnering with the pro-abort, pro-gay marriage World Economic Forum that has this elitist attitude? about world, you know, taking world domination according to these principles. Do you, do you, why is the Vatican so interested in, in, in partnering with them? I, I don't know exactly why, but because I cannot understand it. Um, these uh, people of the Davos Forum, they have uh, an absolute worldwide uh, propaganda machine. Uh, they are uh, present in all the mass media and they have the mental power of the influence to influence of uh, everybody and with their propaganda they are saying we are doing so good works uh, for the world um, and uh, Klaus Schwab said uh, you have nothing but you can be happy but that is only spoken to the mass, no? uh, the big majority of human beings. And, but they, the elite, they have all the, the private planes and all uh, the richness. And if you look on the, um, um, uh, what is this list, the uh, Forbes list, this is Forbes list of the first uh, 10 or 100 richest men in the world. Uh, their richness is not uh, came not uh, together only with the work of their hands. No? <laughs> this is, this is, all this uh, super richness is the result of a certain form of exploitation of the others. And we are in favor that everybody uh, could live uh, by the work of his hands and his spirit and his intellect and to nourish his uh, family and that everybody has the right to possess his own house, uh, his possibilities, that he doesn't depend of the good or bad will of this so-called uh, elite. I think um, they are bringing some millions of dollars or euros uh, to the Vatican and they think now with this money of these rich people we can help the poor people but they can only give a little bit but uh, for a glass of beer but, but they don't change fundamentally structurally 
the situation of uh, the people. And that is no future, that only a s small elite is becoming richer and richer and more powerful. They have all the power in their hand and they can make the definition, definition what we have to think, what we have to say, what we have to eat, and we get to sleep and uh, with, with whom we can live together in the family and so on. They, they make the definition of the family against the reality of the reality, the, the family, the marriages of one man and one woman. And they are, makes the definition to uh, man can live together from a family that is always all the, the stupidness uh, against, against the reality, the created reality. And therefore, um, these people, they can nothing do for a good progress, good development of the world. Uh, they will all will end like in these others. Um, <clears throat> Forms of ideology, the realization of the great ideologies in the national socialism, fascism, in the communism in Russia, because all these ideology, ideologies don't respect the human dignity. They don't believe in God, our creator, and they want Harari, this philosopher of the Davos Forum. Uh, he says, we are, uh, this is his book, um, Homo Deus. We are our own God, we are our own, own creator, and this will uh, end in a, in a chaos. I think that it seems like bishops and cardinals around <clears throat> the world are beginning to realize that we're not just talking about, for example, like you say with Harari, we're not talking about traditional mass, Latin mass versus English mass. And it's gone way beyond that now. And as you say, talking about someone like Yavul Harari, he is now calling for a corrected Bible, for an mm -hmm. AI written Bible that he says will be correct finally. So I think, I think mm -hmm. this, this could be, if people understand what's happening at Davos, it could unite, it seems to me, many, many Catholics and many bishops and many cardinals, once they realize what the real agenda is here, to crush the Catholic Church and to set up sort of a new one world religion based on transhumanism and some of these ideas. Do you think that that's a good approach when talking to bishops who are <clears throat> sincere, to remind mm -hmm. them or try to educate them about what's happening at the World Economic Forum? I think a lot of bishops are too naive. They, 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 they believe not first in the word of God, absolutely, but they are believing all this uh, propaganda uh, phrases of this elite, we will make it the world better, and so and um, but they must look behind the scene. What is is happening? Eh? Hitler's books also about freedom and about peace and and developing, but we look must look behind it. Not only believe what these uh, dictators or bad people, egoistic people are are, are speaking. Eh? Um, in the Bible is that the devil is closed in as if he were uh, the angel of light. <laughs> and therefore Jesus said, uh, don't be in our language so naive, <laughs> so, so ingenious. You must look behind. No? And the Bible is the word of God, written word of God, uh, the testimony of the first uh, preaching of the apostles, of their testimony. And therefore, this is a word of God, full of the truth. And what uh, Harari is thinking about is the word of human beings, their absolutization and self-demonization. No? And we had it in the old times when the Roman emperors were not only the ruler of the emperor, they um, said to themselves, we are gods, no? <laughs> and, and the, the Führers, the leaders of this, uh, um, great ideologies, they are feeling themselves God, no? Hitler felt himself as a God, no? The truth is, is what is coming out from his mouth, no? 
aus Stalin, ne? das ist ja um, the master about life and death of the others. Ne? That is a, is a position of self divinization but in reality, these people are devils. Your evidence, you, you couldn't be obviously more right because they've actually come out, Harari and Klaus Schwab and these guys, especially Harari, and he said the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a myth. It never happened. Jesus Christ never happened. It's fake news, he called it. Mm -hmm. So I just think mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's high time that, <coughs> that the church understand the threat that's coming from mm -hmm. these quarters of these elites that you're talking about. Um, and, and I want to read something that you wrote and ask you to comment. You wrote in this interview recently in Info Valley County, you say false prophets who present themselves as progressives have announced that they will turn the Catholic Church into an aid organization for the 2030 agenda. In their opinion, only a church without Christ fits into a world without God. That eminence, that is precisely what's happening. Do you see, do you see anyone in the Vatican with, during the run-up to the Synod who understands what, you, what you've written here in this interview? Yes, we had in the last days here the death of the former Prime Minister of Italy, Napolitano, and the Pope went there um, and uh, two or three cardinals and some cardinals took away their cross uh, and uh, there was no prayer or because he was a, a communist, no? but if we as uh, the successors of the apostles, the testimonies, uh, the disciples of Jesus Christ are going there to honor them, and the first what we have to do is to pray for them, the best what we can do, and to give a good testimony of Jesus, the crucified and the risen Lord, and not to um, let it behind uh, us and to do or to present ourselves in this secular um, circumstances also as secular people. We are not secular, we are coming from God. We are the, the messengers of God and his gospel and his uh, uh, truth. And therefore, this is not good, this companionship with this uh, anti-Christian uh, movement and they don't want the best of the uh, human being, of the human uh, existence. Harari said the world is senseless and what sense has to make a new uh, produce a new Bible. No? That's the fake news. No? That the fake news is that uh, the, the human existence have no existence. He's responsible for the depressions of uh, the people. If they don't find the salvation in the in the baptism or in the Holy Eucharist, in the encountering, in the communion with Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, you must take drugs, no? you must take alcohol, and to destroy yourself. No? and your family. Um, this is not uh, edification, but it's a destruction of, of the human being. That uh, this is a false uh, prophets. I think so these people are um, the devils closed uh, in the, the, the image of, uh, of an angel, um, but they are so destructive and they are saying we have too much human beings we must irradiate the people, irradiation of, of the people and, and the destroying of killing of people was always uh, the sign of the Hitlers and Stalins and Mao Zedongs. We have too much people, we must kill them. And they want to decide uh, what life is worthful and what life is worth less. And they want to play the gods, but in reality, when human beings begin, are beginning to play God, they are revealing themselves as a real devils for the mankind. It's as if they first came after the soul, destroyed the soul, tried to destroy the church, and now they're going after the body. I mean, in Canada, they're literally mm -hmm. now going to help people die who are merely suffering from depression. 
And that's a formerly Catholic country as well. Eminence, I wonder if you could say something. It seems, I know you don't have much time and I, and I want to get to uh, a, a couple of strategy points uh, that you can advise us on. Um, it seems to me, Eminence, that there is no cause more important than restoring the moral and spiritual authority of the Catholic Church. There's no cause. Politically, we just lived through in the United States of America a person who was patriotic and who believed in borders and who was trying to you know, restore America, and they destroyed him. So it seems like politically there's very little hope. Therefore, it seems like the hope of the entire world is to try to restore the church and to bring back the voice of Christ the King, as, as, as you are doing, and, and some of your bishops and cardinals were with you, do you agree with that, that really the only way out of this is to return to God? Otherwise, we're, we're, we're doomed. Is that an overstatement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the church is needing a real renewal, spiritual renewal of their faith and the hope in Jesus uh, Christ. And uh, we cannot make compromises with uh, this uh, world with this culture of death, abortion, or euthanasia in the beginning and the end, uh, or, and the, the death uh, as a solution of everything, what is exactly the words of Stalin, <laughs> the death is a solution of everything, and we are in our Christian faith overcoming the death. Jesus uh, is uh, made the victory about against sin and against the death. No? He's a winner of, of this uh, deepest uh, war between good and evil, between the truth and the fake news. No? He's a good news, not fake news. And, and I hope that the Holy Spirit is giving more uh, spiritual, intellectual power to the Pope and uh, the bishops and the theologians and the very engaged um, lay people um, for be getting more, more spiritual uh, power ne? and not be so um, anxious uh, looking to this world. And we have not to make compromises with this dying world, but we have to um, preach the gospel of the hope, the good news against this fake news of the culture of death. Mm -hmm. Now, Eminence, you mentioned famously now that, that the attempted, the, the way the synod was, the synod on synodality was developing, revolving, that if they succeed, it would be the end of the Catholic Church, you said, and you said, it, you, you described it as a hostile takeover of the Catholic Church. Do you see the synod it, now, this, you said this one year ago on the Raymond Arroyo program, AWTN. Do you see the situation has having gotten worse with the Synod, or is it exactly the same, or is there any cause to hope it won't be as bad as you anticipated? Yes, the Synod is not, uh, in this uh, structure, it's not a ecumenical council, and also a ecumenical council has no power and right to change the relation and the basics of the uh, doctrines of uh, the church, the dogmatic doctrines of church in, in question of uh, faith and moral. Um, but there are there's a lot of people who has these uh, ideas that this uh, synod is another form of taking over uh, the church uh, in a so-called democratic way. Uh, the constitution, we make a new constitution for uh, the church, but it's not possible, it's a church of God and not of, of us <laughs> and of uh, ideological groups uh, who can make, take over the church for their, their, for their interests and uh, for their ideas. Surely we have the, um, the promise of, of Jesus Christ that the church will never fail. Um, that is uh, true, but we cannot absolutely exclude that there are new forms of uh, separations of the church and some irritations uh, are coming also from bishops. No? And that is uh, like 
a little bit um, closed and similar to the Aryan situation huh? when there in this first times, fourth century, fifth century, at least in the east of, of the Roman Empire, the majority of the bishops had became Arians. No? And the smaller group of bishops, uh, they, were, they went uh, the right way. No? But sometimes one or two popes, or three popes, I have in, in mention, and also in the Pelagian crisis, um, they were not uh, all the times so absolutely uh, very clear. And uh, one of the, of the popes, Honorius I, was condemned uh, by his not uh, enough clearness in preaching and testifying uh, the faith. And that is uh, possible that also a pope as an individual person is falling in, in heresy, but in this moment he will lose his uh, authority. But we don't hope that we come in this uh, very, very um, um, you know, frightening uh, situation. Huh? Mm -hmm. So when you say we must resist, what mm -hmm. does resistance look like? Yeah, you know, for my person, I can say that I um, are explaining what is the doctrine of the church based in the Bible, in the tradition with the great theologians and Augustine, and Thomas Aquinas, Bonaventura. Um, what is the doctrine of the Catholic Church? Just that doesn't depend on the by uh, by authorian uh, authoritarian decision of uh, the Pope. The Pope has a charisma of the infallibility, but only if he is uh, explaining the revealed face, but not his own private thinking can be declared uh, infallible or can be imposed uh, to uh, the uh, church. Also, Pope Benedict has his own life experiences with the war, the nationalism, and etc. But he never imposed his private experience, life experience, or his private uh, judgments uh, to the church. And even in his book uh, about Jesus, uh, in his trilogy, he said, I, here I am speaking as a private theologian, not as a pope. No? And this distinction is very important also for, for Pope Francis to distinguish between his role to speak as the visible head of the church and his private ideas about uh, migration and uh, the relation of Argentine and, and, and Russia or Ukraine and Russia and this war and so um, surely the Pope must work for the for the peace, no? but how to realize it um, that cannot be um, imposed his private opinion to every body, and that cannot be a criteria to be a good Catholic or not. No? That in the, the Third Reich there was different positions how to react as church to the nation socialism in Germany, to make a loud protest or to, to work behind the scenery, what is a better way, no? but was ab absolutely clear was uh, what uh, Pope Pius XI said um, in his uh, Encyclica mit brennender Sorge, German, this is a German word because it is directed to German, directly to the Germans, he said, absolutely, this ideology is absolutely anti-Christian huh? on the level of the doctrine. But how to react concretely? Um, there are possible different opinions. Huh? But can the Pope say against this extermination of the Jewish people, which who know about it, um, 32, 33, with a loud reaction or with the other uh, possibilities. No? 
And therefore, in the question we have today, the wars and the migration and the climate and, and so, that there is not possible to impose his own opinion or one opinion, uh, opinion. Also, the scientists are not absolutely um, unified. There are different positions. One good scientist are saying um, the climate change is man-made. Other good, also good scientists are saying it's, it's coming from the sun, changing of the sun. <laughs> And so to decide this question um, doesn't belong to the authority of the magisterium of the Catholic Church. No? We have to say the absolute worth and dignity of human being. Abortion is not allowed. That is a moral position. But how to react to the climate change that is not the material of the magisterium of the Catholic Church. The Pope is not a weatherman, is he? <laughs> not a weatherman, yeah. right? And yeah, he did the same thing. It seems like with with the vaccines, when it was very experimental still, and he gave the authority of the Church to endorse that. Um, Eminence, I got just two quick questions, and they're they're related. Before I let you go, because I know it's late there in Rome. Um, one has to do with your, what, what message you would like to send to bishops. I know you were very supportive of Bishop Joseph Strickland recently saying that he should not resign, that he should continue to serve the flock, uh, even, even if, he, if he's concerned about the Synod on Synodality. Um, I think there are more Bishop Stricklands uh, coming, in, in, at least in my country, who are beginning to, to sense that something is terribly wrong in Rome. What would your message be to brother bishops, let's say, let's say American bishops, on how they should approach now this very serious crisis we see unfolding in the Vatican and the Church. Yeah, as bishop, you have you have a lot of courage, <laughs> and also uh, like Saint Paul once said to Saint Peter, that what you are doing in this ambiguity in Antiochia um, that is against the truth of the gospel. <laughs> He criticized this, what's not a uh, wrong um, doctrine, but his behavior was <laughs> uh, ambiguous. No? And this is also belonging to our mission, not to be ambiguous and to tell the truth and to pronounce the truth um, and to, to preach uh, the truth without out fear of, of uh, humans, or, or not for fear of, of the Vatican. The Vatican or the Pope, better said, Pope Vatican is only an institution. <laughs> the Pope is a person, a successor of St. Peter. He has to encourage uh, the bishops and he is our brother and we are his uh, brothers in the Episcopate. No? And therefore, a free word and open word is better than, than adulations and the behavior of, of a Kurt. We are not living in the time of uh, um, Louis the, the 14th <laughs> in, in France, in this square in Versailles. We are living here, where are the tombs uh, of St. Peter and St. Paul, who gave their life for Jesus Christ in their martyrdom. And therefore, it is very important to say open words also as the bishops, but in a form not uh, to make opposition like in the political uh, atmosphere, but to speak about the truth. No? And the bishops have their own responsibility. They are not uh, deputies of, of the Pope and the vicars of the Pope uh, um, because uh, the, with the ordination, episcopal ordination, they are successors of the apostles and they are acting and preaching and um, celebrating the sacraments in the authority of Jesus Christ and not of the Pope's Annuncius. They are um, the diplomats, they are messengers, uh, ambassadors of the Pope as the head of this 
state of the Holy See, you know? but the bishops are immediately representatives of Jesus Christ. And therefore, I said in the case of, of Bishop Strickland very openly, that would be against the divine law of the episcopacy if there will be um, sent away a bishop only because he criticized some questions um, of the Pope, uh, interests uh, of the Pope and words of the Pope, which are not belonging to the uh, revelation. Or, or also in this case, when there is some ambiguity you know, uh, in the behavior of, of the Pope or of some prefects of, of the or cardinals or bishops uh, everywhere. Um, when some bishops had been first uh, president of the Bishops' Conference of Germany when he was in Jerusalem, he put away his cross um, when he went to the um, mosque. Um, and that is, is wrong and we have to criticize it. No? And this is important that the the Pope also is saying the truth um, to this people of the NGOs coming to him or, or the politicians, uh, the, the state leaders, um, not to make too much diplomacy with them, but to say to them the truth. Saint John the Baptist he lost his head when he said to Herod, you are not allowed to do this. But John the Baptist is a matter, is better renowned as Herod, no? as a better name in the history of salvation and better to be on site, on the side of Jesus Christ, the crucified Lord, than of, of the side of uh, these judges and of these bad people who crucified him. The bishops are not the, bishops are, the, bishops are not the successors of Herod and Pilate. They are the successors of Thomas or Bartholomeus or um, Jacob and, and all the other apostles and St. Peter. So one would hope that the more bishops speak out as you have done, the better chance there might be at the next conclave of electing a pope who's going to move more to the to the Catholic center, I would think. Yeah, we are not belonging to one side, no, because always the yeah, pope are speaking against the conservatives, and so that is, for me, that's not good categories, conservatives or, or progressives. We are Catholics. There is not a conservative or progressive Baptism or the Trinity, the mystery of the Trinity and its incarnation has nothing to do with the political spectrum of right and left. <laughs> and therefore, the casualty is a basis and not only one party in this game. All right, my final question, Eminence, has to do with us. We have a, a, a big room full of, of Catholics here who want you to know, and, and bishops and cardinals like you, that you can count on us, no matter what happens. We want to be your best defenders. We want to pray for you. We want to know that you have our support. Mm -hmm. What's the best thing, two, two things, what's the best thing that we can do to stay encouraged, to not leave the church out of frustration or anger or sadness? And also, how can we be most effective in helping in this movement to resist that which is not Catholic, that which is going the wrong direction? What can we do to help? No, first, surely the prayer, the, the, the communion with God. He's, he is our hope and He is our help. But also, we are the cooperators of the kingdom of God and we are cooperators of the truth, no? as the word in the second or third uh, letter of St. John, but was uh, the motto of. Um, Pope Benedict um, 
the 16th, 16th cooperator uh, of the truth, cooperat cooperatoris veritatis. Um, and therefore, we have to speak very open, clear, and loud, not crying, but loud and clear, uh, the truth, and not to let be um, um, lo localized um, in solely in one direction. We have all so to say, or what is belonging to the to the right, um, so the celebration form um, that is not one orthodox or not orthodox uh, right. Now we have in the long history of the church, we have 27 rites. Now in the last Sunday, I celebrated in the Ambrosian rite in, in Milan, Milan, Mailand, and, and also the, the Latin um, rite had some historical um, developments um, but the substance of the Eucharist is the same in all rites no? and um, also the, the reformed new um, Latin rite if he celebrated as a substance of the holy sacrifice uh, could be good no? but on the other hand I was against that, uh, like Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, that the form until the Second Vatican Council uh, would be forbidden. This was also also um, a not theological uh, developed uh, reaction. You no? must distinguish the dogmatic position and a certain variety of liturgical forms. No? And if we are going the east, the liturgical form is a little bit different of us, but the substance of the Eucharist of all the seven sacraments is the same. Do you have anything to say, mm -hmm. Eminence, about Traditionis Custodis and the Pope's effort to cancel the traditional Latin Mass? I think it's absolutely superfluous. <laughs> um, so it's better to, to speak about the doctrine of the of the Eucharist, no? because so many people who are celebrating in the new liturgical form, they don't not do not know enough about what the Eucharist is. No? There is this only a, a religious theater for the entertainment of the. Uh, spiritual needs of everybody in reality is a uh, adoration of God by the most holy reality, the self-sacrificed sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for the salvation of everybody. So that is a substance and the Holy Communion with him. And the Holy Communion, not only in the spiritual, symbolic way, but in the reality, because this bread and wine has become body and the blood, the substance of body and blood of Jesus Christ himself, the word of God, uh, who became flesh, took over our human body and flesh and blood. No? That is a, the deepest mystery of the Eucharist and that is all elevating our uh, spirit give, uh, giving hope uh, for us we have no disorientation in this world with this fake news of the atheism and of the ideologies but of the good edifying news which is the gospel of Jesus Christ Eminence, I know it's late and I, I could talk to you all day, but I won't do that to you. I just want to close by saying, if you have anything, any further message you would like to give us, that's fine. Uh, I'd love to hear it, but I don't want to press you on your time. You've been so generous. And over and above that, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you are doing. Mm -hmm. God bless you, and as I say, it's an honor for us to stand with you as you do this important work of resistance. God bless you and thank you for that. Thank you very much and blessing for all the participants, also those who are 
in the in the internet. Yes. Thank you, Eminence. God bless you. Okay, maybe. God bless you. Okay. All right. Bye bye.